Today we're here with Judge Jack Snipe, Jr. of the First Judicial District of Pennsylvania. Judge, thanks for meeting with us and having us here in your lovely home. You're uh, very welcome. We appreciate it. Um, we usually start at the beginning, and so I'd like to do the same with you and start with your beginning when, with your background. In 17... <laughs> 91. My, my seventh great grandfather moved here from. Oh. Uh, uh, his name was Francis, Francis Daniel Pestorius. Oh, yeah. And he helped found Germantown. Okay. Uh, he built a house at Germantown and High Street, mm -hmm. across the street from what used to be Germantown High School. Yeah. Um, that's my church now. Oh. So I have a close connection with Germantown. Mm -hmm. And my mother's father was uh, taught at Germantown. What do you know? Okay. Um, Pastorius uh, is a famous Philadelphia name, isn't it? I thought you were kidding at first in 1791, but no. <laughs> no. So my father and my mother at the University of Pennsylvania. And I went to the University of Pennsylvania. I bet that was uh, sort of like uh, another step in the family moving <laughs> through uh, the University of Pennsylvania, right? I thought, why don't I uh, go into accounting? Because hmm. that was my major. Right. And. I went down and a blind interview, mm -hmm. and uh, applied as an internal internal auditor. Okay. That was her job of FMC Corporation. Okay. Not the shade room. You would see their regional headquarters. Yeah. Okay. So I worked there for half a year, and I then got into the Dickinson School of Law. I think that's a good one, too. It, it, yeah. If you're going to be a Pennsylvania practitioner mm. and not work at a big firm, okay, it's a pretty good place to go. I think something like... a third of half of... Pennsylvania practitioners have gone to. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, what did you, did you? The first criminal law course I had. Yeah. I said, this is really interesting. Yeah. So as we, as I went through law school, I took more and more criminal courses. Yeah. I took a criminal cases. I took criminal clinics. Mm -hmm. And I worked for the Chambersburg Public Defender's Office Okay. as an intern. Huh. And you worked at the, the Public Defender's Office here? Here in Philadelphia for, for eight and a half years. Okay. Working in uh, regular city hall. Okay. When it was a criminal, criminal court. court yes. Yeah. There was one time when I was I got over to the federal court that um, I did a civil case. And one of the one of the th th things I did was I was sitting at my desk mm -hmm. in federal court. Yeah. And the phone rang and it was Sally Mervos. She, she being the clerk of court for the district court. Oh, okay. So what did she have? And she answered the phone directly. <laughs> and she said, Mr. Um, Mr. Snyder, I'm calling to ask you whether I can give you a case. 
I sat on in the public <laughs> defender's office. Yeah. I, I can only do criminal case. Yeah. She said, Mr. Schneider, I want you to do civil case. And I, I said, I, I get paid only by working yeah, in right. the court. He said, Mr. Schneider, I know it all. <laughs> Yeah, you do a federal case. I'm not going to ask you. Third time. Fourth time. <laughs> Fourth time. She <laughs> said, I asked around down here to federal court. Yeah. yeah that, that, does anyone get along with yeah. the way to move? <laughs> Go right, right. And uh, when I was in the court, um, people who thought, I got along with strange people. <laughs> Appointed me as backup counsel for a seven defendant move case. Oh, great. <laughs> and uh, as backup counsel. I hear you saying backup. Some yeah. who was the who was the first counsel? Was it them? Were they? There. Yeah, representing themselves. Yes, representing themselves. Yeah. And. Uh, I think it was Myrna Marsh. She was a criminal. I think she was a criminal and civil. I said yes, Judge Marsh. Right. I, I, I was done saying no judge yeah. <laughs> or no clerk. Uh, so I was a standby counsel. We would confer. I never did anything there. Yeah. Well. So anyhow, you were needed. Maybe she uh, sat out the clerk of the uh, Eastern District, the Third Circuit, had called the, the. So the clerk of the Third Circuit is like the leader of that court, right? The head person in that the court. The head administrative. Yeah. Administrative person. Yeah. So I say, who is it? No, no. She started by saying, "I hear it move. We'll talk to you." I say, "Yeah, they've talked to me. I'd like to appoint you for a Third Circuit appeal. It's a civil rights case." Mm -hmm. And I say, "We didn't do civil cases." <laughs> so uh, I got appointed to write the Third Circuit brief. Oh, really? Because she, she, I would never say she didn't want to give this to someone who did, did, doesn't do 1983 cases. Right. So it was John Africa, who had just been extradited from New York because he'd been charged in the fire of uh, Powell's office. Yeah. So by that time, uh, something like two were still fugitives, two were under arrest on fugitive warrant. Yeah. And, uh, how many is that? And John was extradited and had been extradited. He from, came back. Yeah. And, uh, I got appointed to represent him. This time I was not such a junior man. I, got, I was allowed to sit up at the desk with them because Judge Clifford Scott Green, who was a trial judge, oh, right. yeah. was too tired of um, the goings on with the move. To, yeah, and didn't want to do backup cancel. Mm -hmm. But I was backup cancel. And I question about four or five witnesses, and uh, and John Africa said when we got around the closing argument, yeah. and I just said, I, well, he had said this before. He said, um, I don't want a court-appointed court backup counsel to give my closing argument, and asked. Judge Green, that um, 
Judge Green said, if you can have that typed up and I have a week or so to look at it, I might let you do it. Uh -huh. And uh, he said yes. So um, I wrote the closing argument, but gave it to John <laughs> to, so he could deliver, deliver it to it. the jury. Right. And John, Judge Scott, said, okay. So John gave the closing argument, and I think one or two witnesses, yeah. he was too upset, John Everick. Uh, so he let me cross-examine yeah. some more peripheral witnesses. Okay. So that trial took about... It was a long one, wasn't it? Four weeks to try, four weeks to pick a jury. Yeah. What made you, what prompted you to become a judge? I mean, you were having so much fun at the defender's office. I saw some of the judges in the municipal court and they... You just knew it wasn't I right. I did much better yeah. than this. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you'd have lawyers and or even defendants groaning in the court, yeah. audibly groaning. When you were elected, what... Court I was like the court of common yeah, pleas. Yeah, court of common pleas. Okay. Yeah. And then what kind of cases did you hear there? Also criminal? Also criminal. Um, Non-jury cases. Okay. Did but what, a, what about your proudest moment? Do you remember what that was? Yeah. Great, the Grace Ferry race confrontation. Grace Ferry race confrontation. Uh, I know there, there was a problem down there uh, at some one time, there were still big. Some Caucasian yeah. guys came out of a beef and beer and uh, uh, Grace Ferry. Grace Ferry, right. They ran in there, that's a kind of integrated neighborhood. There. Yeah. About 30 or 40 white guys came out of the a beef and beer. A beef and beer, exactly. There were two white kids walking down the street. They lived in the same neighbor. There was some, they bumped into each other, and a fight broke out. And a couple of black kids and a, a lot of white, white men, yeah. yeah. So there was bumping into each other. Yeah. And it turned into a fight. Right, a bad one probably. No, actually, nobody ever got badly injured. Oh. But they were banging on front doors. No fire, no weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried that and we tried it as a non jury. Okay. There were nine defendants. And it was all in your hands? Yeah, um, there was one DA and nine defense sounds. Mm -hmm. I thought this could turn into a crazy thing. Yeah. So I said, has anyone thought, that there are ten players, has anyone thought of doing this as a bench trial? Yeah. And they said, no, really. <laughs> what about? And I said, I know all of you guys, and my fear is that you're going to do. Uh, I, I, I said I said this off the record. Yeah. I have a feeling yeah, you guys are going to showboat a little when right. you have 12 uh, jurors. And two of them. Yeah. And they all said, no, we haven't thought <laughs> <laughs> I said, let's just go next door and talk and do another quarter. Yeah. Said, do we just, so we just thought someone was going to for a jury trial. Right. I say, I know all you people, <laughs> and you're all going to try to make a production on this, right. and it's going to take much, much longer uh, it really than if you just yeah. a jury trial. At this time, I think the... Uh, District Attorney also had to agree yeah. to a... To the bench trial. To a bench trial. Yeah. 
So they talked about it for a while. And all 10 of them said, we trust you. We get a lot from, from all your experiences, and they're always important. Good. And I know it, on occasion it wasn't easy telling me about them, and I appreciate the, what you went through to do it. Yep. I really do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much.